Welcome back to the channel everyone and we are on week three of our 300 horsepower NA Ecotech build. As you would have seen in our last few videos we did the trans cooler mount which is looking pretty good in there. In this video we might do some interior stuff. Um, we've got the engine back from the machine shop or the block I should say. As you'll see over here. So the blocks sitting here all good. We might um, do some dummy assembling Get that all set up and we'll do some unboxing with some parts and some things like that. So grab a drink, grab some neat, grab a seat and enjoy the video. So we have uh, these are uh, some second-hand 60 thou oversize that we're going to chuck into uh, here. So we're going to do a bit of a dummy assembly, just do some measuring, check the how much they come out to see if we need to deck it or not. That's pretty much all we're doing now. We'll jump for time lapse. Alright guys, today we're going to look at modifying the loom. We're going to remove these standard Bosch connectors for the injectors. And we've got some Oscar injectors, that's the style of connector that the new injectors are going to be. Um, so we'll put you on to a time lapse to follow along. Right, oh, now we have finished putting our connectors on. As you can see, it turned out pretty nice. Um, definitely better changing out your connectors than using an adapter, in my opinion. I've heard people having dramas using the adapters, so we've always just gone ahead and bought connectors and pinned our own connectors on if we're changing injectors. But yeah, we'll see you in the next part. Alright, so now we are putting in the box, uh, we're just prepping to put the motor in, so the motor, or the, at least the bottom end assembly, rotating assembly has to go off for balancing this week. So we're just going to get the old 4L60E, chuck it in, and we're going to mount up all the cooler lines and everything. So we will be probably a variety of time lapses and just normal footage, we'll see how we go.
the olive. The olive only goes on one way. So you want to push it into your Teflon pot. And I'll just use the hoist to push it on the other way. Bit of lube. Bit of hot pillar. Push your fitting in. And then just take your lock nut and run it up. I know, I'll just grab another one. That should be tight enough. And we'll get it into the car and get it fitted up to the cooler. So we couldn't actually show the fitting of this because it's a bit of a tight squeeze, but uh, we've got our 45 degree fittings on some stainless line. Your top is your return and your bottom is your out. So we're running the lines alongside here, which we haven't fitted them properly, properly yet, but they will go to the cooler, as you can see right at the front there. I just got stabbed by the uh, stainless. Nice. A little two-piece for the temperature sensor we're going to use to wire in the fan on the relay. Everything should go in here. All right, so that's all plumbed in. So the bottom here is your in from the box, pressure line, yeah. And the top is the return. And it's the same with the gearbox. The top is the return on the gearbox and the bottom is what comes out back to the cooler. All right, here's something a little bit interesting. Um, so we've actually modified head here so that we can fit iridium plugs. Now keep in mind iridium isn't the takeaway here, the heat range is. So this is an 8, um, we were running a 7 and we knew a 7 was a bit too hot. We wanted an 8 but you can't get 8 unless you start going iridium. So what we've done is we've modified the um, where the spark plug goes just so we can fit it in there and it actually fits in there quite nicely now. And bonus, um, there was actually six of these brand new in the glove box in that car, assumedly because it was on nitrous, so they probably had colder plugs in it. But yeah, a little tip there. We'll um, see if we can get it in there. I've got a brand new one here, just give me a second. Show you if it goes in. So it doesn't look really much different. There is another bonus. The strap is slightly, slightly thinner, and I mean slightly, but that it, it does help with clearance. So see we go in there. And it'll go in a little bit more, but the point is we can actually get a socket over that. So yeah, a little tip there. So interestingly enough, we can't pop the bonnet. So this time lapse will be us just spending however much time we need to to try and get this bonnet up. We think it's because we uh, didn't bolt it on all the way back like we should have. It's loosely bolted on the front, but hindsight is the times. Alright, that is us for today. We got a fair bit done. Um, as you can see, we've got the cooler lines on. Um, you can 
sort of see them down there. They run the back of the cooler. We haven't got the cooler wiring done or anything like that yet. The rotating assembly has to go off for balancing still. We have still got a fair bit to do, but I think that's it for today's video. Probably be a short, would have been a short one today. But um, remember, if you did like it, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, join us next week for some more.